For you run, walk, run practitioners, I've got a multiple choice question for you. Which of the following variables is the only one that influences how much time you'll spend walking in say an hour of running? Is it A, run interval time, B, walk interval time, C, the ratio of run walk ratio, or D, moon phase? Welcome to the Aegis Runner, I'm Ralph. Hey, if you're a running enthusiast and not yet a subscriber to my channel, please consider doing so and click that subscribe icon down in the corner anytime during this video. Thank you so much. So today I thought we'd dive a little deeper into some of the uh, Jeff Galloway run, walk, run parameters, run time, walk time, ratio, and so forth, to get a little deeper understanding is how changes in those affect your overall pace and your energy expenditure. And for a little more intelligent about it, we can make changes to help us achieve whatever objectives we're trying to meet during our run or our, or our training. So my opener, I asked you a question of which variable is the only one that influences how much time you'll spend walking, say per hour of running or half hour of running. I gave you four choices, uh, run interval time, walk interval time, the ratio, and phase of the moon. Obviously it's not phase of the moon, that's just me being silly. So the correct answer is C, that run-walk ratio. That's the only variable that influences how much time you'll spend walking per hour of running or half hour of running, whatever length of time is your measure. So why is that? Well, the answer is it's a ratio. That ratio determines a percentage of the time or walking versus the whole run-walk cycle. For example, if you're using a one-to-one -one ratio where say you're walking 15 seconds and running 15 seconds, a total run cycle is 30 seconds. And you put your walking 15 of that, so 15 divided by 30 is a half. So that means in an hour of running using a one-to-one -one ratio, you're going to walk 30 minutes. That's just math. It doesn't make any difference whether you're running 15 seconds and walking 15 seconds or running one minute and walking one minute, it's still gonna be at 30 minutes in an hour that you're going to run. I'm showing you a little math I did today. So a lot of what I'm gonna to talk about today involves math, but don't worry, I'll do the math. I'll just show you the results. And you see, I just calculated the walk time for three different ratios, one to one, three to one, and six to one. So again, if I'm doing a three to one ratio, it means I'm walking one unit at a time, and that unit could be 15 seconds, 20 seconds, could be a day but then I'm, I'm running three of those units. So the total cycle is three run units, one walk unit, that's four units, but I'm walking one unit, so I'm walking one fourth of my total cycle. So if you're using a three to one ratio, you're going to walk approximately 15 minutes during your hour of, of running. So you can see in my little uh, table there that higher ratios will give you less walk time. So, so why is that important? Well, the less you walk, the more energy you're going to spend in an hour. So if you're doing a really long run, maybe you want more walk time, maybe you're okay with less walk time, but that ratio is going to determine how much time you walk in an hour. And of course, the other impact, the amount of time you walk is going to impact your overall pace. The more you walk, the lower your pace is going to be. Now, if you've watched any of my videos, I kind of espouse about, don't worry about pace, go out and enjoy the run and, and have a good time. But there, I guarantee you, there will be times when you're going to be concerned about pace. For example, you've got a race coming up, it's a 10K, and you say to yourself, boy, I'd really like to set a new personal record in this 10K coming up. And that kind of an event, you might be concerned about pace because you want to have a faster pace, for example. So at least you know that the higher the ratios, the faster your pace is going to be because you're walking less. So how'd you do with that first question? Well, let's try another one. This is a true or false question. So it's a 50-50 chance of getting this one right. For a given ratio, longer walk times can lead to faster fatigue. So this particular question is not necessarily a trick question, but you had to pay attention to what I said. And I said, for a given ratio, will walking longer cause uh, quicker fatigue. And that's a true statement. It will cause quicker fatigue. Well, why is that? It has a lot to do with the frequency of walking breaks you take. So I'm putting up another, another table here that looks at the number of walking breaks or frequency of walking breaks for a three to one ratio. Again, with three to one ratio, if you remember before, you're only going to walk 15 minutes an hour. So how do you want to split up your run walk time within that hour? So if, if, I'm, if I'm using a three to one ratio where I walk 15 seconds, and run 45 seconds, that's three to one, my total run walk time is 60 seconds. So how many walk breaks am I gonna take an hour? Well, I'm gonna take 60 because I'm, I'm doing a run walk for a minute, there's 60 minutes an hour. Now, if I double that, if I double my walk time to 30 seconds, I've now gotta double my run time. So my run time goes up to a minute and a half. So I've got a 30 second walk and a minute and a half run. Now I got a two minute uh, run walk cycle. Well, how many run walk cycles do you get an hour? I'll get 30, I just cut it in half because I doubled my running time and my walking time. So why is going from 60 to 30 maybe cause faster fatigue? Well, when you go to fewer walk breaks, 
you're running for longer periods of time. I'm showing you another little chart here to kind of illustrate that. So I'm showing you a diagram here to kind of illustrate that. Uh, the upper diagram is kind of a high frequency uh, in walking breaks for run a little bit, take a short walk, run a little bit, take a short walk. And a lower diagram is where you have a much longer run and with, a, with, a, with a walking break. So the longer you run, the more you're pushing yourself, right? Let me exaggerate and say, what if your walk run cycle was walk five minutes and run 15? So then that 15 minutes, you're going to be maybe a little tired and you're only going to take a five minute rest. Then you're going to run another 15. So the more uh, you run in each interval, the quicker your fatigue is going to come on because you're not getting that rest break as quickly as, as a higher frequency. So where fewer walking breaks may increase our energy, it could have a positive impact on our pace. So when you're running and walking, you have to, every so often, depending on your intervals, slow down to walk and speed up to run. Every time you do that, there's variability and inconsistency. How many steps do you take to slow down? And how long when you start up does it take you back to get back into your rhythm? And you lost your rhythm when you, when you were slowed down to walk and you get back up could take you a little while. And that may vary from break to break. For example, my interval timer has a couple of short beeps and then a long beep saying, change to walk or run or whatever sequence you're in. And depending on where I start, am I doing all of my slow down to walk before the uh, walk time starts or am I kind of into my walk time when I do it? So again, all these things add variability and consistency in your pace. And if you care about pace, you don't want that variability. So the more walk breaks you take, the more inconsistency you have, and the more that'll compound over your run. So fewer walk breaks will probably help improve your pace a little bit. But on the other hand, it'll make you maybe tire a little, little more faster. So let me try and put all this kind of in perspective. We talked a lot of numbers that threw a bunch of charts and, and diagrams up at you, but just let me try and summarize this so it all kind of makes sense. So we talked about a couple of variables today, specifically run-walk ratio and walk time. So if you're interested in energy conservation, trying to maximize your energy, you want lower ratios. Lower ratios will give you more walk time within an hour or half an hour or however long you're running. So lower ratios or there's an or, not in, lower ratios or uh, shorter walk times because that will give you shorter walk times, shorter run time. You'll get more frequent walk breaks during your run. That would help maximize your energy. If, however, you're more interested in pace, trying to improve your pace, you kind of want to do the opposite. You want to look at a higher ratio to give you less walk time or higher walk time because that will give you less interruption to your running, uh, give you less, uh, less frequent walk breaks. Hey, hope you found this interesting and useful. If you did, please click that like icon. And while you're down there, click that subscribe button. That really helps my channel. i uh, love to have you stay with me if you're not a subscriber. Got lots of interesting things I like to share and talk to you about as we go forward. So thanks again for watching and happy running.